coach that pickoff base running play in the seventh that turned into Justin Scorn. Was that a design play or just kind of a heads up base running thing that went your way? Um, which one are you referring to? Uh, the one where it was uh, runners on the corners. They picked off to first. Both guys went, and Cassell ended up scoring at the plate. Um, yeah, I mean that was it was. Uh, <laughs> I won't comment on that. That's a good question, though. I won't comment on that one. Yeah. Coach was subbing Drew Smith out after he took that walk. Was that intentional, or did he get hit on the? Or was he hurt after getting hit by that pitch? No, he got thrown out of the game. He got thrown out of the game for running his mouth. They had already warned both clubs early in the game about. Uh, um, I don't know what word they use, but uh, you know whatever. Um, you know they they warned both clubs, and so anybody who then later on got any sort of offense, it was an automatic ejection. So he got ejected. Do you like what you saw from Toby today in his first start? Uh, parts of it, you know, and then there was youth as well. You know, there was some immaturity. His his arm is great, you know, and he's a competitive son of a gun, you know, and I love that part. He made some really big pitches. Um, his pitching got he got up there pretty good because I don't think he was super efficient. I think he got emotional. Sometimes it worked for him, sometimes against him. I mean, overall, just really excited about uh, the fact that he looked like he could be a, a big-time starter for us, and he showed that in spurts. And so, you know, plenty to build off of with Toby. Coach, on the other end of that, and Gritzel strikes out 10. What did you make of his performance? How did you feel about that today? Um, it looked like a Friday guy. Yeah. Do you see him in that role moving forward? We're trying to figure out the rotation for sure, and he's clearly an option. Yeah, he looked like a Friday guy today. For sure. Yeah. Mullen struck out four in relief today. What did you like that you saw from him? He looked old. We played young in the second game. He looked old. He looked poised. He looked under control. He made big pitches when he needed to. Um, and he just kept making big pitches. He pitched old on a team that has a lot of youth, um, whether they're young or just um, inexperienced. Uh, that's what we have. And so today we saw in game two some youth and inexperience, and Bradley really kind of just settled things in, and he was the player of the game in the second game. You said you looked young in that second game. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what you mean by that? Just up and down with emotions. You saw it on the field. You saw just too many things that became very, very emotional instead of um, and that usually is a lack of trust, either in one's ability or a teammate's ability, and that's something that we as coaches need to address and continue to try to build young people up that are inexperienced to where they trust themselves first and their teammates second. On, on paper, I mean, you get two big lefties in both games and fairly similar lineups. Was, was that youth in the second game, that youngness in the second game, kind of what set the two apart? Um, well, I don't know about that. I mean, they threw probably their best arm in the the second game, you know, the guy was running at 94 to 97 with a nasty secondary pitch. So, you know, that, that kid was really, really good. And so I think that he had something to do with the fact that, um, you know, we struggled more than we did in the first game. As a team, do you think you're able to take away more from a 15 to four game like the first one or kind of a closer, more competitive game like the second one? Um, we need both. You know, we just need to play more. And the longer we play and play together with our team, the better off they'll be and the more they'll trust each other. I just think that there's a lot of people that have never even really been in a college dugout in a big time, uh, you know, in a big time college dugout where it's a big time environment. So how do you act until you've been there? You know, you, you really don't know how you act. And showing trust to teammates is something that you learn by being in the dugout and being experienced, which we don't have. So we got to coach them up on how to do that. And you gave yesterday a B performance overall. What would you give today? Um, there were parts of it that were an A performance, and parts of them, parts of it that were, you know, probably a not passing performance. And so, you know, it was that's that's what I mean by uh, an immature young performance is you see too much of both. And so, a steady B performance. I think if you play a B plus game pretty much every time you roll out of the chute, uh, you'd be pretty good with that. You know, instead of expecting excellence every single. Uh, thing that you do being an A plus, you can't miss a question on the exam. Uh, that's probably pretty unrealistic. And so, you know, we're trying to teach these guys that you're going to have failure in the game, and when you do, you stay poised, you stay mature, and you know these guys will learn that. There's a lot of ability, and there's a lot to like. Casella had a big game one. What do you have to say about his performance in game one, and where do you see him in the lineup moving forward? Well, tough kid. You know, we've rolled him out there in the leadoff spot a couple of times, and he's gotten on base to start the game, which is a big deal. You know, I mean, it's. When, when you're pitching to somebody and the leadoff guy gets on on, on the opposing team, that, that can be frustrating. You know, you always want to get that first out of the game, and Justin's been a pest. He had a big first game, um, and he's a tough kid. You know, he's able to do a lot of things on the field. We saw that in all of our scrimmages, and so, yeah, good observation. Justin's a talented player, and 
you know, if he continues to play like he is, you know, the leadoff spot, I mean, he can run away with it. He's a, he's done well with that spot. Last year, Gavin Grant spent the bulk of the time in the nine hole, and he was really good at turning the lineup over, getting it back to the top of the order. Um, are you liking what you're seeing from Carter in that role this year? Um, yeah, so far, you know, and, and, and Carter's, you know, he was the best shortstop in the tournament we were in last, last weekend. Um, and today uh, he played exceptionally well for a good probably 80% of the game, and then he had a couple of things sneak away from him. Um, you know, where his leadership has really grown tremendously. Um, you know, even Carter kind of fell off a little bit, and I'm sure my wife will tell me, well, it was a long day, honey, and, you know, you got to expect some of that. And yet where Carter wants to go and these guys want to go in the big leagues, then it's not a long day. It's just an opportunity to play baseball for 18 innings or however long we're out there. And so, you know, the mental toughness to do that is, boy, it's, it's not easy. And so I think that's where we had some lapses is the fact that, yeah, it can be a long day and you got to be mentally tough to be able to handle 18 innings worth of game. And uh, we probably handled uh, 16 innings worth of game today. I would I'd figure 15. So, you know, we got a little bit to work on for sure. Some of the shuffling we've seen in this lineup has mostly come in the two hole uh, this weekend. Uh, do you, is that just kind of a spot you're still trying to work out, or you're just trying to get new faces, more at bats? Yeah, we're trying a lot of things, you know, just to try to figure stuff out. Um, you know, Chase Meggers, uh, you know, I think he wore two fastballs off the kneecap in the first game, and so I don't know how sore he was going in the second game. He's a tough kid. He said that he could go, uh, but we had already had it designed where he wouldn't play in game two after he caught in game one. Um, but Chase has given us a pretty big lift in that two hole um, in the last couple of days. I don't think he had an awesome day in the first game, um, but still yet he's given us a lot of lifts in that two hole and he's been taking competitive at bats. Shows a lot of toughness, you know, standing in there and not moving when a 90 something mile an hour fastball is coming at your knee. You know, that's a tough kid right there. Hurt had three hits, including his first homer as a duck. What did you like that you saw from him today and how excited were you at that? I like what you liked. I like what everybody sees and likes in Jeffrey. He's a wonderful human being, first off. Like, we've taken him out of games, and he doesn't make a stink. He doesn't do this. And, and the way he's playing, uh, boy, he is just really playing well, you know, and, and hitting well. He fills up the box with confidence. He's a poised player, very mature. He looked like Brad Mullen as Mullen pitched today and showed confidence and poise. That's exactly what he looks like in the box right now. And at the beginning of the year, we were batting him closer to the bottom of the order. And he's obviously uh, earned a lot of respect and trust from his teammates and coaches to be in the middle of the order. And he's killing it there, too. So good for him. Neat kid. Really neat kid. Good? Bases loaded. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we're good. Yeah, no, we're good. There's a pause in there. <laughs> we're fine. Um, second game, bases loaded at the end of the ninth inning. How do you think the team handled the pressure with a setup to potentially tie that game? Well, that's a wonderful question. I think that's, um, you know, I don't think Logan was sharp. That was obvious. And yet he was still able to find the confidence and, and the tenacity to be able to come through when we needed him. You know, with Patron, the left-handed hitter, you know, he's a heck of a left-handed hitter. And he needed to get him out, and he made big pitches uh, to him. And then to be able to finish the way he did uh, with the pinch hitter that came in, you know, another left-handed bat, he was able to handle two very good hitters at the end of the game um, with the game on the line. And so that was exciting that Logan was able to pull it together and be able to have the mental toughness to execute when he needed to. I thought that's a great question, and I thought that was a, a really, obviously, it was the reason why we won the game, for him to be able to, to get grounded and execute those pitches.